peace is something I believe we can all strive for, be it one's general peace of mind or a more overarching global peace amongst all mankind. And while the ideas of peace sound sweet, the actions taken by many to try to maintain it is a much different story. Be it the creation of numerous systems put into place like mutually assured destruction or organizations like the United Nations, all of them have a purpose to forcibly maintain an illusion of peace in our chaotic world. And and it's these themes of peace that exist prominently in the story of Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, and more so directly in the petite Pacific Princess Pacifist patroning a prosperous potential peace, Paz Ortega Andrade, also known as Pacifica Ocean. Paz, or Pacifica Ocean, is a specially trained spy who originally worked for Cypher that went on to become a major figure in both the lives and legends of Big Boss and his many nations without borders. Initially meeting Snake around 1974, she wears the face of an innocent student for peace who found herself trapped in a terrible situation, when in reality she was working under the orders of Zero to strike back against Snake for abandoning his position in the Patriots. Though throughout her time spent on Mother Base and interactions with Snake himself, she soon felt a strong bond towards the man, yet the realization of her feelings comes far too late into her mission and soon enough her hand is forced resulting in catastrophic consequences that rippled throughout the series. Though, before we get too deeply into that, let's understand the meaning behind her name and design. Starting first with Paz's design, as she was created rather early on in the production of Peace Walker, initially being one of the people directly involved with the creation of Metal Gear Peace Walker itself, though eventually the decision was made to have Paz play the role more like that of an innocent symbol of peace. Even seemingly borrowing design elements from another Konami exclusive IP, that has been referenced in Metal Gear games before. This, of course, being Castlevania. You like Castlevania, don't you? With Paws seemingly taking direct influence from Maria Renard, and more specifically, her Rondo of Blood design, as they are both youthful women who harbor an unexpected power. As well, since her early inception, Paws has always been depicted wearing a large red raincoat, making a clear connection to Little Red Riding Hood, which is fitting as Paz's character works in tandem with the lesson of that fairy tale, that being that people are not always what they appear to be. It is also possible that the character of Paz was partly inspired by the characters of Elsa and Ursula from Portable Ops, or more so she is a reimagining of these characters. As Kojima doesn't exactly consider Portable Ops to be direct canon, it is more partial canon, as in the events happen but he's not going to hold strictly to them if he makes a game that conflicts with them, and Peace Walker was sort of his way of reimagining those events in his own vision. Now, the characters of Elsa and Ursula is that of a female soldier who worked under the main antagonist, Jean, who possessed such extreme ESP abilities that it caused her to have a split personality, hence why she has two identities. Paz, as a character, is somewhat the same, just minus the psychic abilities, with her living a double life. Though, interestingly enough, another weird coincidence found between these characters is not only does Paz and the twins share a voice actress, that being Tara Strong, My name is Paz, and I will do anything to protect my namesake. Nuclear warheads must never be used. They are terrible weapons. Everything dies. So does their respected partners, with Jean and Zadornov both being played by Steve Blum. I was a heavy smoker. When I got my medal from the Secretary General, he gave me this prosthetic hand as well. You read my thoughts, Ursula. I let down my mental defenses thinking you were dead, but it's no use. You can read my mind, but you can't keep up with my body. Now, Paz's character also has a lot of great symbolic connection with the concepts of peace, and it's best seen in her many names. Starting first, let's discuss her true codename, that being 
Pacifica Ocean. Now, while the name Pacifica Ocean might be borrowing from the Earth's largest body of water, that being the Pacific Ocean, much like the character, the name Pacific Ocean itself is rooted in the ideas of peace, as it was given its name by the famous Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, which named the ocean Mar Pacifico, or Peaceful Sea. As well, the word Pacific has a root in Latin from the word pax, which it itself means peace, evolving over time into Spanish and Portuguese into the word Paz. So Pacific not only has ties to Pacifica, but also Paz as a whole, and is likely what inspired the creation of her fake name, Paz Ortega Andrade, as the game directly mentions that her given name Paz is literally the Spanish word for peace. But then we have her fake middle and family name, which also plays rather well into her character. Firstly, you have Ortega, a surname which has roots in Spanish much like her given name, though Ortega's origins come from the Latin word orticio or nettle, which is a herb-like plant that possesses small, seemingly unnoticeable, but stinging hairs that irritate those who get close, which plays very well into Paz's role as a spy, especially after listening to her tapes and hearing the type of personality she had underneath her sweet demeanor. Then you have her family name of Andrade, which is a bit more complex, as the name itself has a long history, though the meaning of the name has two rough translations. Firstly, you have the Road of Women, as well as the Descendant of the Strong, which actually ties back to her history, as Paz, or Pacifica Ocean, was born in the United States, though due to some unfortunate circumstances, she was orphaned at a young age, but was quickly adopted by Major Zero, or Cypher, to be enlisted into a program to become a full-fledged agent of Cypher. And this training was extremely harsh. Being not only intense physically, like most military training, it also involved intentional starvation and spending days without sleep. She was also required to infiltrate and gain a standing in both the CIA and KGB at the same time, which was a feat made extra difficult thanks to the looming Cold War that entangled both governments. And while these requirements seemed unreasonable for most, it is that way on purpose. You've had a hard time getting to where you are. Sewer rats lead better lives. I know. Extreme training. Starvation. Days spent without sleep. Abandoned, hurt, and all but killed in every way imaginable. Some of your compatriots died. Others betrayed you, left you for dead. And you did the same to them. But through it all, you survived. And you alone made it here. <coughs> Just look at you. You'll be perfect for this, to strike back at Snake. I'll share everything I know about him. And while this process was designed to vet out those who would be useless to Cypher, it also showed those who succeeded the cost of failure would be a punishment worse than death. Meaning you will be the ninth Paz Ortega Andrade. What happened to the others? They're in the next room. They've been taking it easy these past few months. They... <sighs> this whole program instilled to her total loyalty to one person. Cypher. The one true power in this world. And in being their agent, she was a descendant of that power. And while this loyalty was strong, it was born more out of fear rather than love of her adopted father. Though to say that her loyalty went entirely unrewarded isn't true either, as Paz became one of the very few people in Cypher's life that he was completely willing to meet in person with. Yet, ironically, in meeting the man and seeing the power he controlled, she ended up losing a lot of faith in the idea of peace as while every nation seems to operate in the hopes of achieving it, seeing how many of them simply dance in the palm of Cypher caused her to view each of their conflicts as futile, becoming more and more bitter to this illusion of peace. Yet soon enough, Cypher would task Pacifica Ocean with becoming the embodiment of it, granting her the identity of Paz, all with the purpose of monitoring Vladimir Zadornov, who himself was tasked with swaying the Latin American interests towards the Soviet Union, 
As well, she was sent to keep an eye on Hot Coldman, an American FBI grandpa who had recently formed the Peace Sentinels. And of course, her main task, striking back against Big Boss. Now, Zadornov was the key to everything. He eventually took on the identity of a professor at a soon-to-be sanctioned University of Peace. Paws would assume the role of one of his students, who was recently captured by Hot Coldman's American-funded Peace Sentinels, and so happened to escape with a cassette recording made by her still-captive friend, featuring the boss's voice, found deep within the jungles of Costa Rica. Paws even allowed herself to become subject to torture in order to make her innocent story seem all that more convincing to Big Boss, leaving a telling scar that ran across her right arm. And this was seemingly inflicted on her while their leader, Hot Coldman, watched. And with her bait successfully set for all three of them, Paz would then enroll in a nearby school in Sudet Colon, Costa Rica, with her schooling funded secretly by KGB money, while Big Boss infiltrated the Peace Sentinel's operations. Though, eventually things would come to a head all over again, and Peace Walker would reach its final stages of development. Hot Coldman would move to recapture Paz right out from her school district, with the hopes of using her to lure out Big Boss. But in turn, he also forces Adornov to play his hand fully, who reveals to him that he had been using Coldman the entire time, even though, ironically, the two of them had been manipulated perfectly by Cypher, and everything was going according to Paz's own plan, as Zadornov would then place Paz into a position to completely absolve herself of any possible suspicion. With the KGB agent forcing a gun into her hands and aiming it at her former torturer and kidnapper, but ultimately, she refused to pull the trigger to maintain her Angel of Peace identity that she would need to infiltrate MSF. Though this scene is rather interesting, especially this interaction between the characters, as in the original storyboards made during the drafting phase of Peace Walker's production, Paz and Zadornov had a much closer connection to the creation of Peace Walker as well. There were multiple scenes which involved them that were callbacks to earlier games. But once caught, the two of them would betray Hot Coldman, with Zadornov executing the FBI grandpa before Paws would steal Zadornov's gun and kill him in the same way. Eventually, she would end up fleeing to hijack the newly designed Metal Gear Zeke as well. Though, the story wouldn't play out like this, and Paws' connection to Peace Walker, almost as a whole, would be severed. Though, eventually, Big Boss and Peace Walker's AI Mammal Pod would prevent an international incident created by the two men that Paws had been manipulating. As well, the details of the event would be released, revealing not only Hot Coldman's plan, but Zadornov's identity, which in turn caused Paws' school's funding to be cut, leaving this seemingly innocent girl high and dry. Big Boss and MSF, feeling sad for Paws, decided to offer her a room on board Mother Base. And while on base, Paws would offer up her services to the PMC, usually working as their cook. And it was here that Paws would begin to grow an actual bond with the members of the base, from Chico developing a small crush on her and trying to involve her in his activities, Miller trying to raise her spirits with his antics, and Strange Love causing her to experience some bisexual panic. She rubbed the lotion all over my entire body. I shouldn't have enjoyed it, and yet I could not help myself. For a moment, I was spellbound. That woman is dangerous. Even Big Boss himself would try to make Paws feel more comfortable, with there even being a whole event dedicated to cheering her up. Eventually, Paws would begin to feel something she never had before, a calming peace. Her time on base had showed her a personal connection that can exist between man that didn't involve fear. And to everyone, except a select few, Paws was nothing more than this innocent beacon of a peaceful tomorrow. Miller and Boss even began to organize an event called Peace Day which would be a holiday dedicated to the idea of peace and relaxation. The base would lower its guards and celebrate life. And for this day, Paz was even selected to perform at the event. And while she initially begrudgingly accepted the offer, she did begin to practice on her own. Miller even wrote a song for the occasion, but deep down, 
Paz was unsure if Peace Day would ever truly arrive. As resting aboard Mother Base existed a weapon that was completely invisible to the world. This being Metal Gear Zeke. A weapons platform created by Peace Walker's team entirely in secret. What made Zeke so deadly though is that it was nuclear capable, meaning that it could be equipped with a nuclear weapon and strike from seemingly anywhere. Paz's mission from this point forward was to hijack this Metal Gear and use it to force Big Boss into a position where we'd have to return to Cypher and work with him or be destroyed. And how she was able to accomplish the first part of this mission was by routinely freeing her former partner Zadornov from his cell on Mother Base, and then turning her attention to Zeke while the staff focused on tracking him down. Sort of retooling her usage of Zadornov from the early planning stages that I had mentioned earlier. Though, Paz still desired to enjoy Peace Day, as even though she had finished Zeke's modifications long before the event was planned to occur, she began to contemplate sending Cypher false information for the first time. Big Boss and MSF had warmed Pacifica's heart ever so slightly, yet Cypher rarely leaves things to chance. And there was another agent amongst MSF that reported in on the modifications to Zeke being complete. This then forced Pacifica's hand three days before the event, as if she wanted to celebrate Peace Day, this meant she would have to go against the wills of Cypher and sabotage Zeke. But in attempting to do so, she ended up getting caught by someone she least expected. This being Chico, the young boy who had a slight crush on her. And normally, Pacifica would have eliminated such an easy target. But something caused her to stop that day. She let Chico escape, which in turn put her in a do-or-die scenario, with her now having to choose between her new home and Cypher. But fearing the actions of the latter, Paz hijacked Zeke and distributed the ultimatum. Yet she did so knowing full well Big Boss would reject such a thing. She then engaged in battle with the man who showed her nothing but unending kindness. All while a song that she had planned to sing for Peace Day begins to play in the background. The name of this song is Love Deterrence, and it is a song about a young girl who is unable to express her true feelings. And I believe it matches Paz and her character in a number of different ways. Firstly, of course, you have her nature as a spy, as Paz literally could not express her true emotions while working at MSF, as her tapes prior to the hijacking demonstrate the type of person she really was and how much she had to cover up. However, her love for some of the members of MSF and her developing love for the base itself became a deterrence in its own right. As well, this ballad works as a confession towards Big Boss as well, as while Paz doesn't realize it in this current moment, she had fully developed feelings for Snake, emotions that would lay cracks in her loyalties towards Cypher. This fight alone is one of my favorite moments in all of Peace Walker, the juxtaposition of a cheerful J-pop song about love and not being honest with oneself playing over a battle between a broken man who threw away the last piece of his past and a spy who had finally found a place to belong that now has to throw away her future is just so bitterly beautiful that I just can't not love it. Though, this twist on the idea of love being a literal military deterrence for her isn't the only theme of Paz's character. As I've mentioned multiple times, she has a lot of running motifs, but one that sticks out the most is her reoccurring usage of the peace sign, which itself has a rather interesting history and ties very well into the themes of the interconnected nature of peace and war. As the two-finger peace sign is actually a co-opted sign from around the time of World War II. As when Allied forces would clear out and claim an area during the war, they would signal this victory with a two-finger salute, a V for victory of some sort. This sign would quickly be adopted by anti-war protesters during the 60s and transformed into a rather ironic symbol of peace, resulting in something that can and has been used in media for its double meaning as the peace sign can show that a character might not be fully honest with their intentions or their true history, which is commented on directly by Paz before her boss fight, as she has been using the peace sign ironically throughout the whole game, signifying not peace, 
but that everything is going according to her plans. Though, a more subtle sign that is seen throughout the game is that of the butterfly. We even see that Peace Walker itself is marked with a butterfly. And, while a lot of this symbol is tied with rebirth symbolism involving the mammal pod bringing back the boss in some small way, with the Morpho Butterfly also symbolizing Joy, which is of course the boss's old code name, they also tie directly back into Paz, a young girl who transforms throughout the story, starting as a student or a pupa. While on base, she is waiting for the perfect time to strike, she is within her chrysalis or cocoon, and then she fully becomes a butterfly when she hijacks Z. Though, soon enough, Boss would catch the butterfly, and the battle would come to a close. Paws would be hurled into the Caribbean Sea and vanish into the uncaring waters, floating towards the coastline where her body was recovered by a fisherman. Though, when word spread of her rescue, all of her worst fears were made manifest. A cipher agent would soon appear to recover her. She was then transferred to Camp Omega, a prison camp owned by the United States and operating within its occupied portions of Cuba. Here, she would be tortured and interrogated for information. Though strangely, her interrogator was not looking for anything involving MSF or Big Boss. Instead, they were demanding the location of Major Zero. This is because the agent who recovered Paz was that of Skullface, a man who seeked to not only kill Zero, Big Boss, but then enact his vengeance on the world. A man who can sort of act as an embodiment of everything Paz feared about her line of work. Though, her will remained strong, and she refused to sell out the man she feared more than death itself. Yet, this iron will of hers would not last forever. Soon enough, the word of her capture would reach MSF, and more importantly, Chico. The boy that not only developed feelings for Paz, but considers his actions the night that she modified Zeke to be one of his darkest moments. Now knowing where she was, Chico would sneak off Mother Base in an attempt to rescue her on his own. Though, XOF captured the boy rather quickly. Skullface deciding to use him to get the information he wanted, as while well, Paws initially didn't want to interact with Chico, as in doing so she would open up a weakness for Skullface to dig into, the two of them would soon find solidarity with each other while captive. Paws believing that as long as Chico was alive, there was always a chance that Big Boss would rescue them. In a way, she was viewing Chico the same way that he and the rest of MSF used to view her a beacon of hope. Though, just as Paws had feared, Skullface would begin to use their bond to form a new method of torture. Eventually, Paws would cave to interrogation and gave Cypher's location up. With this, Skullface got a little bit more honest with her and had Paws fully defiled by his men. Eventually, a bomb was implanted into her stomach, leaving behind a grotesque wound in the shape of an almost mocking V. As well, Skullface had his men forcibly insert a second bomb into a place that Boss would be unlikely to check. Which, side tangent, was weirdly referenced in Smash Brothers for some reason. You'll never be forgiven for this. Following this, he would then begin to break down Chico. Skullface would force him to not only watch the continued torture of Paws, but perform it as well under threat of death. And soon enough, this mixture of psychological and physical torture would cause both prisoners to crack, not helped by the fact that Chico would then eventually sell out MSF and Big Boss, causing Paws to grow a hatred towards him calling him not only a coward, but a traitor. The little hope that they had developed together in the prison camp was now completely shattered, leaving two completely broken individuals. He would then leave his freshly broken victims to be reclaimed by their boss, while he set off to destroy the base that they had both worked to build. Eventually, their rescue would be completed without much issue. Boss not only retrieved Paws, but Chico as well and the helicopter began its return to base. All the while, the man who would soon become Venom Snake was running medical duties on this mission, and identified the first bomb in Paz's body. But sadly, he missed the signs of the second. And then eventually, due to the hectic situation that would follow, Paz would awake in a panic, springing to life and forcing herself towards the exit of the helicopter. Feeling the first bomb in her gut gone, she knew that the second one was still in place. 
Opening the door, Paz took one last look at the three major men in her life. The man she loved, the agent who forced her hand, and the boy she finally found hope in. And then, she fell backwards into the ocean below, before eventually erupting into a fireball that would kill Chico, injure Boss, and of course, create Venom. Paz's whole role in the story of Metal Gear Solid V was to become an intentional perversion and distortion of the image of peace that she was initially created to be. Starting from stripping her of her youthful and innocent appearance with a shaven head and scarred body, right down to the bombs being implanted in her, having a mocking peace sign drawn on the surface. She was used to show the total destruction of a peaceful future for both Big Boss and Venom Snake. Though, in the actual game of Metal Gear Solid V, we see this perversion taken to a whole extra level. As, while Venom Snake was mentally grieving over the loss of Paz, he created an illusion of her that somehow managed to survive that night. One who was devoid of all the evil and flaws that the initial pause had. A girl who really was an innocent angel of peace that the soldiers of Mother Base knew her as. Though, beyond this, we also see her likeness repurposed on the base for a stylized poster of a cheerful idol of peace, which of course plays further back into her intended role during the Peace Festival all those years ago. Though, this is just a character of what she pretended to be. No one sees Paz for who she was anymore, and in a desperate attempt to recapture the peace that she once stood for by creating these posters, the girl sitting in the medical bay, and finally the butterfly which Venom can't grasp, all they did was create illusions of peace. Distractions created to hide from the pain of reality. And if you want to see me delve into this a little bit more deeper, especially from Venom's perspective, I recommend you check out my video on him specifically. As, at the end of the day, Paz's story is one of a very uncomfortable tragedy. A person who had nothing and was forced into a position in which she would be given nothing either. Yet, the one time she found a willing home with an open door for her, it was promptly forced shut on her. And it is her role in the story of Peacewalker, as well as how she was handled in V, felt like it was purposely done in a way to resemble a person whose snake had finally grown the strength to forget. That being, the boss. Now, I say this, but Paz is an imperfect imitation of the boss. As, while the two of them are both symbolically tied to the butterflies found throughout Peace Walker's story, the boss was a spy forced to betray her country and the man she was closest to out of duty, where Paz was forced to take up arms against the same man, more so out of fear. As well, Paz's youthful features may have been done intentionally because, as I mentioned, the butterfly is a symbol of rebirth, and Paz could be seen as the boss reborn. As well, thanks to Ground Zeroes, we also see the two of them have been physically scarred in an uncomfortable place. Though, while the boss had something removed that day, Paz had something implanted. And, of course, they both greatly impacted their own snake's lives to change the world, with the boss creating Big Boss, while Paz physically created Venom. You could also argue that both of their creations would then go on to pervert their image in an attempt to try to recapture the beauty of their life. Though, while the boss is more outwardly an important person that shaped the future of the series, Paz's effects on Venom shows that she was just as important in the grand scheme of things, proving that even when you have someone as powerless as her, they can still have a lasting impact on those around them. No one is truly without worth. Paz helped keep the gears moving, spinning in a direction which would build a more peaceful tomorrow. She was truly an angel of peace, even though she believed she never could be. Though with that all said and done, if you enjoyed this video and want to help support more videos like it in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash medinotthebadguy. And if you are in desperate need of your own love deterrent, well let me tell you, Shimonetta, a boring world with a concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimonetta.com is the perfect solution.